we'll do now is switch over to chapter five. And chapter five is called Controlled Potential Methods. So chapter four is sort of a short chapter which discussed diffusion-based problems and solutions to diffusion-based problems in electrochemistry. Chapter five is uh, the first chapter where we're gonna start talking about real experiments and real experimental uh, visible things. In other words, we'll be able to take a look at an experiment and predict the current and concentration in that experiment. So chapter five is control potential methods. What that generally means is that we're gonna do experiments where we have a system with a microelectrode in the solution and we're controlling the potential of that electrode and monitoring as an experimental variable something to see the current that flows. So we're gonna hold the potential constant and monitor the current that flows. Obviously we could do the opposite. We could control the current at a fixed value or, or some function of time and then monitor the potential. But in this particular chapter we're gonna study what happens if we control the potential constant and then monitor the current. Well, here we have a typical control potential experiment. We use an, an instrument called a potentiostat. Potentiostat is just a, another word for a potentiostat that's used outside of electrochemistry as a voltage clamp. Basically what it does is it uh, uses electronic feedback to maintain a constant potential at our desired uh, electrode. And so it uses auxiliary electrode and a reference electrode as we've already discussed to maintain a proper potential at a working electrode. And we would have in there some sort of a current meter to measure the current. So our potential stat has the ability to hold a potential constant, but usually it also has inputs, for example, so that we can control the voltage that we've applied, either by applying a voltage sweep or commonly a voltage step or a voltage pulse. And so, for example, this would be a typical experiment. We apply um, at some time equal to, we'll call equal to zero in our experimental time scale, we start from some initial potential and step to a final potential. So this it would be a function of potential with time. So let's ask ourselves, we can, we've already sort of thought about this sort of problem and I think we've done enough that we can ask ourselves what might happen. So let's take for example a solution of an oxidized material and one oxidized material we use all the time in, in my laboratories and my students use it is this thing called ruthenium hexamine. It's an ion um, that's easily reduced. It's an oxidized form. It's easily reduced. And in fact, it has an oxidation potential <coughs> of um, approximately 0.175 volts versus the silver silver chloride. So we've drawn diagrams of the um, current potential curves, and we would know that our initial guess that the current potential curve for the ruthenium hexamine would be something like this, where we've got current versus potential. And this would be our E0 prime, again about 0.175. But these current potential curves are steady state values, they're equilibrium processes. Right? So 
The question is now, now we want to see what happens when we do not have an equilibrium system. And we can ask ourselves, suppose we start at a potential here, which is our initial potential, E init. And if we look at that, even under normal situations and the steady state conditions, this would have a very low amount of current flow. So essentially we could approximately say that zero current flows at E init. What if, however, then at some time equals zero, we step the potential so that we step the potential to this potential here. Let's suppose that's minus 400 millivolts. And that's E final. What's going to happen under those conditions? What would you expect to happen? Would the uh, current that you f would flow at all times be equal to this plat limiting current plateau? <laughs> No, probably not because that plateau is an equilibrium condition and so we're st using the time as a variable now in our experiment. So since we're allowing time to be any value, uh, we can't really expect it to be at equilibrium at all times. So especially at short times, we'd expect a non-equilibrium uh, system. Okay. And so we expect some current flow that would be not equal to the plateau current when we step out there. We've also seen what happens just when we do potential steps in solution. One of the things that happens is we get a charging current flow and uh, because of the double layer capacitance and the solution electrical characteristics. We won't, it, it, we won't worry about that right at this particular moment. We'll see how that's important later. But we expect <coughs> some non-equilibrium All right, and so let's see if we can derive what that non-equilibrium current flow as a function of time is. So we need to solve, in order to do that, we need to solve for equations that include the effects of mass transport. In other words, is mass transport in the system by diffusion, by convection, by migration? What are the, what has, what's going on? We've seen uh, equations already for those three conditions. So whatever we choose for a, a form of mass transport has to be, uh, we've already got a, a, an equation for it. Uh, and also, the effects of electron transfer kinetics. reaction may not be fast enough so that all, at all times we would get the equilibrium result. So the electron transfer kinetics may also have to be considered in the system. And for maybe, for example, the effect of a chemical process occurring simultaneously with electron transfer also has to be considered. So, but you can see there's all sorts of things that would have to be considered ultimately to get a complete solution of the current time potential characteristics. Well, in general, we're going to get a form of the concentration profile that will look something like this. If we plot the concentration of O at X and T variable, again, O in this example would be rho hex, concentration of O rho hex, uh, it would go from two ultimate points, there would be a zero current or concentration, there would also be the bulk concentration, that would be the maximum concentration. And at x going to infinity, the, bulk, the concentration would be whatever the bulk concentration would be. And at time equals zero, the concentration would be uniform throughout the system because we haven't really perturbed it. You can see before we do the potential step, we're sitting here at E init, which is essentially non-perturbing potential. However, as soon as we allow the potential to be stepped over to the plateau, 
what's going to happen to the concentration? Well, the concentration in the vicinity of the electrode will be perturbed. And so we might expect that the form of the current, uh, the concentration with X and time, and we won't really specify what time that is, but some time greater than zero would be, have a form like that. And the concentration would be close to zero because we're out here well on this plateau, which would be predicted to have zero. All, all the reaction is occurring very rapidly. All right. So in this chapter, we're going to start out by considering only diffusional problems. So in other words, we need to solve problems like this. What's the concentration of O at X and T as a function of time? And that's uh, a fixed uh, law problem. Uh, I can't write today. And likewise, for species R, even though it's not perhaps initially present, and it may or may not be initially present, but species R must also be considered in any solution in the system. Of course, this is now considering a, a fairly simple system where we only consider a diffusional process. We've only considered uh, O present or R present initially. No other chemical reactions are occurring. We're also not considering um, the effect of migration or convection. So we're assuming probably that there's a large amount of uh, supporting electrolyte in the system as well. Well, these are the two problems, the two uh, equations we need to solve to solve what the form of the concentration is with time and what the form of the current is with time. So let's write some initial conditions. Well, we've already seen some of the initial conditions from the previous chapter. We know that time is at time equal to zero. The concentration of O is equal to the bulk. And CR, X equal to zero, can be one of two things. We've considered the fact that maybe O is only initially present or R is present with O. So either C sub R is equal to zero or C sub R could be equal to the bulk concentration of R. Of course, you're usually resolving these for only R O present, but of course, we can just translate it to only R present just simply by changing the variables around. I hope you can see that. So that's not a, a problem typically. So there's our initial condition. We also usually consider what we call a semi-infinite condition. That says that as, as X approaches infinity, the concentration of O at all times um, equals the bulk. In other words, if we go far enough away from the electrode surface, the concentration of O is equal to the bulk. That's our, what they call the semi-infinite condition. Likewise, C sub R as X approaches infinity A would be equal to um, zero, or our alternate boundary condition would be CR bulk. Also, we often constrain our system to have what we call a mass conservation property. In other words, when we oxidize R, an equivalent amount of O is produced. Or if we reduce O, the exact amount of R is produced under the system. This is not always the case. For example, if we had a chemical reaction from O to R and then a chemical reaction chewing up R, then the mass conservation wouldn't be appropriate. But in this particular simple initial problem that we're going to solve, we can make a mass conservation statement that says the concentration of the gradient of O at um, 
in the x direction at the electrode surface is equal to uh, the, the negative of dr, or an alternate way of saying it would be, uh, this would be true. And that would all equal to zero. Okay. So the idea would be that for some value of O, that would have a concentration time, or concentration distance profile, something like this, we would have a concentration of R that would have a concentration profile, something like this. In other words, the gradient at the electrode surface would be equal, and that's our mass conservation property. So this would be C sub R. This would be C sub O. Now these conditions above are almost always the same for what we call semi-infinite linear diffusion problems. These sort of problems would occur, for example, if we had a solution that was a large volume of solution relative to the size of the electrode. So we have a large volume of solution. We also have usually an electrode that is not rotating or convecting by any sense. In other words, the diffusion is the only form of mass transport. Migration is not considered. Um, the other condition is that we have a planar electrode so that diffusion only occurs effectively in one direction. So uh, a, a linear diffusion system where we have, we've assumed that the electrode extends to plus and minus infinity in any direction. And so the only real con direction in which diffusion can be considered to be occurring would be in a one-dimensional direction to that electrode surface. And so we only have to consider, in this case, one dimension. As we go to, a, say, a spherical diffusion, we had, we'd have to redraw our uh, equation into spherical diffusion coordinates, typically. Or we could have, say, a very rough electrode, and that would be a difficult problem to solve because we'd have to consider nonlinear diffusion at certain time scales. But generally, we're talking about semi-infinite linear diffusion. So we're talking about planar electrodes that are diffusing to it with no convection. And those, aside from seem, seeming somewhat simple, are actually can be very complicated. Well, let's stop right here for our break since we're basically at an hour, and uh, we'll continue this in a minute. From our little break. And um, as we were finishing up, we just said uh, the solution, these sort of conditions that we've just illustrated here are semi-infinite linear diffusion conditions, which will give us the concentration profiles with respect to distance x in solution and time in, uh, of the experiment. Usually we also are interested, because that's an observable variable, is the current. And so basically we're going to be solving equations for current like this based on Fick's first law. Basically the concentration gradient at the electrode surface. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Now, if you recall, in general, when we have electrode kinetics to consider, we can write, write down what the current will be for any particular value of the, of the uh, kinetic parameters and concentrations. So we can write down that the current normalized by NFA is equal to K0, our standard rate constant, uh, and a term that would have a concentration of O at the electrode surface times, remember, the exponential function. That is basically the potential away from the standard potential times alpha. 
now that equation would be what we'd saw, we'd use to solve that particular problem. The problem is finding the values of CO and C sub R in the system. Um, and this works pretty good. You know, of course, we have to make sure that in so using this as a general solution that E is not a function of time. And uh, for many cases, that's true, but a lot of cases, it's not. Uh, particularly, for example, like cyclic voltammetry where the potential is swept, obviously the potential will be a function of time. So we have to avoid that kind of uh, formulation in the case where potential is a function of time. Well, the general case is, um, <clears throat> of course, most interesting to us. We want to know the form of the solution under circumstances like that. But we can actually solve uh, subsets of this general case that are quite a bit simpler. So let's, I think it would serve us to do a solution based on some simple, simpler uh, cases. So let's look at four specific cases that we can solve that do not require the whole full-blown current um, relationship of kinetics. Let's look at case number one, where the concentration of O at the electrode surface at all times greater than zero is equal to zero. And that's a very specific case that we can solve. And that um, is called a Cottrell um, case. In this case, it's totally mass transfer controlled. We don't have to worry about kinetics because the kinetics don't really enter into it as long as the concentration of O at the electrode surface is zero. The kinetics will be zero. All right. No, the kinetics would be essentially not considered. The other case would be what they call a reversible case, where K0 is very large. And uh, in that case, we make, can make some simplifications on our result. The third case we'd call irreversible, where the kinetic effect is only on one branch, either cathodic or anodic results. As we increase the potential, you see that uh, one of the rate constants becomes large and the other one becomes small. And so K after KB becomes large and the other one essentially becomes zero. So that would be an irreversible case. And the fourth case will be called a linearized case. And you might remember these three, the last three cases as cases that we saw when we looked at the TAFL plot. And that these are the situations where we can actually solve directly that TAFL equation without relying on the use of the mass transfer coefficient as a semi-empirical parameter. Okay, let's take.